In the kitchen design, we'll begin with the room specification where a number of attributes can be defined, such as a room name and the floor and ceiling heights. There are additional settings for moldings, wall coverings, materials, and other characteristics. Now that this room is defined as a kitchen, notice that the room label and the square footage are displayed. Next, I'll change my saved plan view to the kitchen and bath set. Saved plan views are used to isolate specific views, layers, and default settings, such as for kitchen and bath, floor plan, and electrical views. I'll begin placing the cabinets in a 3D perspective view. Using the Base Cabinet tool, I'll click in the corner of the room to place the cabinet. The program recognizes the cabinet is being placed in the corner and automatically creates a corner cabinet. I'll change this cabinet to a pie-shaped cabinet with a Lazy Susan. Next, I'll place a base cabinet to the right of the corner cabinet and resize it by selecting the drag handles and adjusting it to the desired size. Notice how the cabinets bump, form a continuous countertop, and the cabinet door automatically changes to a double door. To change this cabinet to a bank of drawers, I'll click on the door, change the face item to a drawer, and split the face item horizontally. As I place the next cabinet and resize it, notice how the cabinets are resizing in 3-inch increments. This can be changed to 1-inch increments, or you can open the cabinet and specify any dimension to the 1 16th of an inch. To remove the drawer, I'll click on the face item and then delete. For the next cabinet, I'll resize it to 33 inches, open the library catalog, and locate a microwave drawer from one of our manufacturer catalogs downloaded from our 3D library. Then I'll click on the cabinet drawer to replace it with the microwave. Appliances and fixtures can be inserted into cabinets or next to them, such as the refrigerator, range, and hood. You can use the center tool to center the hood on the range. On the right, I'll place a base cabinet, resize it to 8 inches, and remove the face items for an opening. And then I'll select the two cabinets on the left of the range and use the copy and reflect about to fill the space. Chief Architect supports both manufacturer and custom cabinets. In the cabinet specification, you will see all the options to modify the cabinets, including type, sizes, countertop, box construction, door and drawer styles, hardware, and many more options. There are literally thousands of cabinet combinations that can be made in Chief Architect. Door, drawer, and hardware styles can be applied in 3D. To customize these cabinets, browse through the catalog, locate the door and drawer style, and then click to apply them onto the cabinets. Manufacturer cabinets have wood species and finishes that can be applied to the cabinets the same way. For custom colors, you can use one of our paint manufacturers and apply the color in a stain mode or in a solid body mode. For countertops, there are many selections to choose from, and then you can apply to the cabinets to visualize your options. Wall cabinets work similar to base cabinets. With the wall cabinet tool, I'll place the first cabinet, then resize the height to 54 inches. In the cabinet dialog, I'll set the width to 25 inches, then click on the door face and split it in half. On the upper door, I'll change the style to a hopper or a top hinge, resize it to 14 and 7 8 inches. On the appliance, door, drawer, change the door style to a slab, glass door. Then I'll change the handle to a larger pull style and have it centered. 
On the door drawer panel, I'll change the door style to a slab and also change the hardware to a larger pull from the library. Finally, on the molding panel, I'll increase the crown molding height and offset to 6 inches and adjust the offset for the face item. Notice how it moves to be flush with the door. To stack an additional crown molding above, I'll make a copy and then adjust the values for the height, width, and offsets. Once I'm finished, you can see the completed cabinet. Using the Material Eyedropper tool, I'll pick up the color from the hood and apply it to the wall cabinet. I can then make this my default style cabinet. As I delete this cabinet and place a new wall cabinet, it will have all the attributes that were customized. To the right, I'll place a wall filler and then fade in the remaining wall cabinets. With the Backsplash tool, I'll place a backsplash with my favorite tile on both walls and adjust it to the top of the cook hood. Then I'll place a niche behind the range and resize it. As I return to the plan view, notice how all of the dimensions are updated because they are set to automatically refresh as the plan changes. The cabinet labels are also dynamic and update as changes are made to the cabinets. To create a wall elevation with dimensions, I'll use the Wall Elevation tool, click and drag through the wall. I'll confirm I'm using the kitchen and bath defaults, then dimension using the automatic NKBA or National Kitchen and Bath Association dimension tool. These automatic dimensions can be adjusted to fit your preferences. On the bottom dimension string, I'll remove the dimension on the corner base cabinet for the microwave and turn off the auto refresh setting. On the left dimension string, I'll remove the toe kick, countertop, and molding marks. The opening indicators are layer based and can easily be turned off. To manually dimension the elevation, such as the face items or openings, I'll open the selected defaults and modify the kitchen and bath dimensions to locate to doors, drawers, and panels. Then, in the elevation view, I'll use the manual dimension tool and drag through the wall cabinet to create the desired dimension. There are several settings you can make to easily create specific dimensions. Back in the 3D view, I'll place an island from the library that I created earlier. You can save individual or groupings of cabinets to your library for future use. For color and material options, you can create style palettes, save them to your library, then apply them to the design to create options for your clients. All of these views can be exported as an image or 3D viewer model and shared with your clients.